to create a space like behind the canvas is all about checking out who I am um, underneath the, the lyricists that you see, the music videos that you see, the posts that you see. I really want you to get an idea of where my heart is, where my mind is, what, what I'm into and, and why in the world I'm doing what I'm doing. AI stands for all in. And it's really based off of a scripture in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. What does that mean? It means that while we are here, you need to be doing everything that you can to what? The best of your ability, because it's Christ who we're trying to example or exemplify, right? We're trying to do everything that we can to ignite something in someone else, to lead them to Christ, to preach the gospel, spread the gospel. And so everything that I do, I'm trying to do the best that I can with excellence in Christ. That is the whole motive, the whole mission. And I'm hoping that that same mission and that same idea can be spread to you and then you take that and go spread it to the next person this is not about one-stop shop this is not a one-stop shop this is you go and do find what it is that you are passionate about what are your tools you work them things out and you go out and do what it is that you have to do now behind the canvas interview sessions um, what I like to do is highlight people that I think are dope and that are that I think are going all in within their space and um, utilizing the gifts and skills, talents, or what have you, and doing what it is that they need to do to build the kingdom um, through the arts, through community work, through music, whatever it is. I I want to be able to highlight them. So those of you who have been paying attention, AI for Community was a campaign that me and my husband started, and we wanted to find a way to give back to the community. So we identified an entity, which is the Rebecca Rose Recovery Home. I, I wanted to make sure I got that right. Rebecca Rose Recovery Home. And um, we wanted to find a way to um, raise funds so that we can extend those funds to the home so that the individuals living there could have groceries in their space. Um, we're gonna be talking to the founder, one of the founders of this home, um, Pastor L. Robinson of Spirit of Truth Urban Ministries, and he has a guest, one of the women that are in the house. Um, I'm, I'm so excited about sharing this guy with you all because he is amazing <laughs> he he is by far amazing because uh not only the rebecca recovery um home it's also what he's doing on the front lines y'all i wish i could come to my city and see what's going on what he's doing on the front lines and what he's doing within that community and how he has transformed that community is beyond me it's really dope to see because when i see him i see an example of christ and it's really beautiful and i feel like this is what we should be doing so without further ado I'm going to bring him in so that we can learn more about him. So uh, really quick, a couple things before I do that. Sorry, I have to remember. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely type those questions in. I got my hub, I got my hubby out here writing down questions so that we can um, have some time at the end so that we can uh, spend time uh, answering your questions or L. Robinson or our guest with him can answer those questions. Um, so let's, let's hop in right now. Let, all right, so we have Pastor L. Robinson. So introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are, where are you from, what's going on, and then the, our guest can introduce herself as well. Okay, my name is Pastor L. Robinson here in Lovejoy. I'm the senior pastor of Spirit of Truth Urban Ministry at the Lovejoy campus. I am also the CEO of the Rebecca Rose Recovery Centers of Western New York, and I'm a co-owner of the Labrador Cafe with my wife, Vivian. She is the extraordinarily gifted one that knows how to make food feel the flavor. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Fantastic. I am. Yeah, she's she's definitely dope. Um, that food is amazing. <laughs> and the portions that you guys give out is like, what? <laughs> it could feed like a whole household. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm really excited uh, about you being here. I'm excited about what you're what you're doing. Um, if you want to tell us a little bit about Spirit of Truth Urban Ministries, tell us about how you got into this point. 
Well, you, you know how it is when, when the Lord calls you into service and, you know, you, 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 first of all, you want to know, is God really speaking to me? Uh, is, is this something that he's saying to me or is this what I want to do? Right. right? And after I went through that little thing, uh, <clears throat> the, the verse that I focused on most was in the book of John, chapter 10, where Jesus says there are sheep that are part of this fold that are not here yet. I will compel them to come. And it was that verse that ignited uh, the, the vigor and the boldness in me to start uh, a church. Now, it, it wasn't like I just decided to start a church. I was underneath the, uh, the auspices of Bishop Debo. I was his armor bearer for about 10 years uh, at uh, Greater, uh, you know, the, the church over there on Shumway and William. Yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it was, it's home, you know, Greater yep. Praise Tabernacle is home. And, uh, and so we bought this building and it, it was it was it was surreal he consecrated the building on december 10th mm -hmm. and on december 23rd he died of a heart attack and went on to be wow. with the lord and so we're you're here in lovejoy wow in lovejoy with with zero support it was just my wife and i and the lord there was a handful of people uh that like bishop thompson took us underneath his wings and uh, Bishop Larry Thompson at uh, Mount Calvary Churches of America. And he really showed me the ropes. Mm -hmm. uh, Greater Refuge, Apostle Sanders took me underneath his wow, wings. Wow, yeah, Refuge. Ropes. You know, yeah, Greater Refuge. Yeah. They really they really did Robbie Sanders. I mean, yeah. and I are, you know, Yo. people, you know what I mean? And yeah. so we've seen, we've seen some dark days, we've seen some bright days together. And, and uh, you know, I, all, all praise goes to the Lord for, for even meeting uh, these guys and, and, and going to seminary over there at Greater Refuge. Now, as we're growing here in Lovejoy, you know, I, you know, Lovejoy is is uh, wasn't as diverse, right, at, uh, as you would think it would be, right. Uh, so, I, you know, I was like their first uh, big diverse uh, church here. <laughs> <Drop> and, <it. laughs> yeah, and I'll never, I'll never forget it because I went to a block club meeting and uh, I was raking the leaves in front of the uh, church. And then the next day there was a block club meeting and, and I was sitting in the back because I didn't know anyone. I really have no idea who any of these people are. All I know is that God said to sit here and do this and so you're going to do it. And so I sat there and I heard a woman stand up and she goes, you know, I, I, I saw a color. Yeah, colors oh, wow. walking around the church and doing stuff. And it was like, you know, Whoa, it was like, man. <laughs> it was like, wow. Right? Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, with that being said, you know, uh, she did sell her house. She was right across the street. And she moved, but not because of, you know, any, any kind of racial tensions yeah, yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah. that. But, but uh, <clears throat> so we started just giving. We started giving the word of God to everybody that would listen. And our church went from like three people to five people to 50 people. And, and, and we started growing and growing right, and right, growing right. and growing. And, uh, and then we saw a problem. You know, someone did, did something stupid to one of our properties here. And so we installed some cameras, right? <laughs> and when we installed the cameras, we started seeing things. And so then it began. <laughs> it began, you know, we started seeing things. And we started seeing, you know, uh, that there was, we had an addiction problem. Yeah. And it was at that point in time that the Lord pricked my heart and says, you know what, um, I'm going to be sending you some of those sheep that hear my voice that are not a part of this fold yet. Mm. And I need you to get, get ready for them. And so are we really, that's where we dove into this. And honestly, wow. the, my wife's uh, restaurant is 100% a ministry you know she's there and she's grinding and she's yeah. letting people see the, the, the glory of god in, in their in her restaurant and uh the rebecca rose recovery centers is because of the love that i have uh, for people that struggle they right. struggle with right. with things there's reasons for struggle right well let's let's get into the the four main points um within our behind the canvas interviews i go from concept creativity collaboration and then commitment we're going to dig into the concept, and we're specifically talking about Rebecca Rose Recovery Home. Um, so the first question under concept is, what was the starting point that led to what we now see in the Rebecca Rose House? So <clears throat> when I installed these cameras, uh, especially in the church gardens, we saw a girl tie off in our garden with a tourniquet and inject herself and then walk in circles in the streets. Wow. And, and I, I've never seen that before. And I'm thinking to myself, um, what is this? Right? And uh, 
So I called some buddies of mine that worked for the police force and they said, so, oh, you've got cameras? We'll sign up for safe cam and this, that, and the other. And, uh, and so we signed up and he explained to me about the, the overdoses that we had here in Lovejoy. We actually led Western New York uh, in overdoses and, and at that time. And it was something that was weighty on my heart because here I am on a campus, you know, every, everything is fine here, you know, serving the Lord, everybody's all happy and, and just shining the light of Christ. But I wasn't too busy in my own backyard, right? And right. so the Lord wanted us to go out into our own backyards, and, and which is Lovejoy, East Lovejoy, and to, to serve his children. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's where it all started, you know. And, and then as we were serving the children, we found out about the children. And we found out that there's addiction. We found out that there are struggles and we have mental issues. Yeah. And we have all kinds of things that are co-mingled involved in this. And, uh, and, and our guest here will be able to talk a little bit more uh, later on about that. But that concept... That, that we had prepared us for her. And, right. and it was a, a two year long research and development into all the, I mean, we studied the DSM-3. Wow. We wanted to, we talked to doctors, we spoke with medical group. I wow. mean, we, we really got it in hard and, and we just, we were on that grind. Man. We wanted to know exactly, God, how do you want us to help your children? And so we started two years ago and, and the Lord is, uh, is just blessing us and we've had doctors and friends people chipping in to help from that's, all over the place that's awesome you know all over the yeah, place we see it help because addiction touches all of us yeah it does it touches our it lives does. And, and uh and these people are, are god's children and they're so filled with gifts wonderful gifts that no one even gets a chance to get to because the devil tries to, to get them and snuff it before they can even get off the ground. Exactly. And so that's how the concept was started. Exactly. Uh, it, you know, as you're as you're talking, all all I can think of is the Ephesians, the, the scripture in Ephesians. Whatever your hands find to do, do it. You that's and that's what you're doing. You know, you're you're doing it unto God. You're doing it with the best of your ability, and it shows. You know, you you saying, oh wait. First, I thought it was just a matter of putting cameras up, but now that we have these cameras up, now we see that there's issues. And then I know you on, on that side of Buffalo and the establishment of relationships. And from the, the natural um, development of relationships, then comes, oh, these, these are other things you all need. And so let me implement this and let man you guys have done so much over there it's, it's really amazing but within the same idea of concept what um led you to your framework for building community within this particular neighborhood why this why well, love joy you know <clears throat> this is going to sound really weird and this is the first time you've heard this uh i had uh when we had a, a sprawling House over there on Quarter Avenue, you know where Symphony Circle is yep. in Buffalo. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful it space. Out, you know, living large and in charge. You know, making <laughs> money, doing our thing. And my wife and I uh, uh, were. She, my wife is a natural entrepreneur. She is just a natural. Yes, but she she did a, a rebuilt one of one of our homes and and made it a carriage house and just did fantastic things with it. But uh, I I had had a dream, and in this dream, I was driving down the down like some Jetsons type of corridors. And I and there were people pulled over to the side on a skyway. And they were looking over the edge and they were like, they had these like ghastly looks on their face. And I said to myself in the dream, like, what are they looking at? Hmm. And my wife said in the dream, she said, why don't we pull over and see? And I said, no, I, it's none of my business. It has nothing to do with me. I'm on my way home. I, I right. could care less what these people are doing, right? And, and so I proceeded to continue driving forward. And then I saw the looks on these people's faces and I got curious. You know, that's a scientist to me. I got real curious. I wanted to find out what's going on. I pull over and like six stories below, there was a bridge out mm. and there were all these horses and they were walking backwards mm. on, the, on this road, walking backwards. And then they would just fall over the edge. Wow. It platter on the ground like 10 stories below. Oh my goodness. And, and I was I was like, well, this defies all logic and I mean, the, the, the rationale, I mean, what's going on here? I grabbed the binoculars and I looked at one particular horse and this one horse, this is, this is, it woke me up in tears. This, this, this one horse was smiling. He had a smile on his face, you know, almost cartoonish. Yeah. And he was backing up and then I watched him go to the edge and he started falling 
and I saw like hooves grab the edge and like wildy coyote little pieces of pebbles falling. Yeah, yeah. And he's smiling on his way down. Whoa. Now the time was dilated, so it's like slowed yeah. down, and I'm I'm looking at this horse, and this horse turns around. He sees the ground approaching. He turns around and looks dead into my binoculars with the with the look of just straight fear, fright. Wasn't expecting any of this. Whoa. And splattered. Whoa. And 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 I and I woke up in my dream and all I heard was, these are my children. Mm. That was it. That was it. These are my children. And I, I look at my wife and I say, what is it that keeps people smiling while it's killing them? And I couldn't figure it out for six years until my neighbor was pulled out of a house overdosed. Wow. We bought the house from the family. Mm. They, they said, I said, this is, these are my intentions with this house. They sold us the house and they could have sold it to anyone, but they sold it to us. And then we started our research and development. And I said, I intend on getting back out of the mouth of the devil. Everyone that God sends my way, I'm going to get, I have every intention to take back what the devil has stolen. Mm. And, and, and once I'm on fire, yeah. On fire. Yep. So to prepare for that, you know, <clears throat> we have a lot of cameras here in Lovejoy. Yeah, yeah. But there's a concept here in Buffalo called SEPTE, which is a crime prevention through environmental design. Mm -hmm. Not only did I take the class from the city of Buffalo, but I'm also a practitioner for the city of Buffalo to teach whole neighborhoods and communities right. on how to do stuff like this. Then I went to Albany and, and became educated in, in how to become a addiction recovery coach. And now not only am I addiction recovery coach, but I'm now a trainer of trainers for addiction recovery coaches. Wow. And uh, I mean, That's... I'm with CADCA, with Samson, I, from the federal level to the state level, Man. I'm involved. I'm Man. really involved. That's, it all sounds like the scripture we're gonna get at later on. But uh, man, that is that is that is wild. That is wild. Um, there's a couple things that you're 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 saying like you had this you had this happen. Then you you had this plan. You keep saying research and development, and I like that because that means that you had to sit and really learn and identify what what it is that you could do and how you could bring education and and perhaps creativity into this idea or this plan or this goal. So as far as the Rebecca Rose Recovery House, um, walk us through the creative process that you and your wife engage in. I wish your wife was here. I wish uh, Vivian was here um, to, to, cause she's so bubbly and fun as well. But um, uh, tell us, tell yeah. us about like the, the tech part and, and, and how you guys used research and development to bring the house to a level of excellence. So first of all, we have a house that was built in 1911. Uh, like like a little shanty. I mean, these are like uh, they're called balloon houses, mm -hmm. where all it's, it's exterior. And we wanted a house that was open, that that had state of the art, uh, everything in was quiet. Now that those were the the initial goals. But then when I started researching uh, addiction and what helps people with addiction, I started learning that special uh, paint on the walls, uh, refracting with a special kind of light. 6,000 K light will mimic sunlight. And I knew that sunlight fought depression all on its own. When you're out in the sun, getting the vitamin K, feeling like, wow, it's a beautiful day outside. It really helps with depression. Mm -hmm. And then once we, we went to PPG and they spun us up, mesmerized silver. Mm. They spun us up a paint, we coated the whole house interior with mesmerized silver, which, which excites the retina to mm. produce serotonin that will fight depression and it's, it's just crazy, but it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so once we did that, we said, what else can we do to improve this? We found out that sound, sound actually fights anxiety, music. Yep. We're all hardwired for music. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that music will actually, especially a certain kind of Hertz music, which is a 432 Hertz music, uh, instead of the 440. Yeah, uh, yeah. Metal right. Group, it's 432 and it'll help ease anxiety so we put an entire whole house audio system that will that will help people become relaxed 
right? That's and, amazing. And Shauna enjoys that, right? <laughs> yeah. And she'll, she'll tell you all about it. Uh, and, and then we learned about aromatherapy. In aromatherapy, certain olfactory uh, glands in your nose respond to pleasant sounds. We're hardwired for flowers and, and certain scents that wow. we will stop and say, wow, that smells beautiful. And then colors, chromotherapy, which is something that my wife uh, loves. I mean, this woman will, will take a a, a, a a cave and make it look like a mansion. I mean, she just, she is magnificent when it comes to this. So she uses contrasting colors and specific colors to bring out uh, 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 joy and enthusiasm in people. Even the floor, we had made specially so that it, it stimulates the soles of your feet for something called reflexology. So the whole floor up up and down has grooves in the in the wood that will when you rub your foot over it it, it actually stimulates your foot and so wow we put a lot of time and then if that doesn't help uh oh we bring in the infrared Canadian hemlock song gun. so <laughs> <laughs> and, and that definitely uh, 45 minutes in there will definitely help a person that's that's struggling with because you're stuck in your head. And in Isaiah chapter 61, verse one, Jesus says he was going to open and, and set free the captives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're captive in our own head. Right. And the idea and the goal was, is to install the technology that would partner with someone in their recovery passively. So it's a passive partnering with someone. It's, and, and so we saw intellectual property on this, obviously, because it's we're the first of our kind to do this. Yeah. And it, it's something that that only God could un, un, unravel, but he did it. And now we're out here, all go, no quit, ready to help Man. everyone that wants to help. That's amazing. So what's cool is we we have a special guest, right? <laughs> do you you want to take, I think this is a perfect moment for you Um to come on in and, and, and uh, introduce yourself, and then maybe perhaps you can speak on the things that he speak that he's talking about that he's done within the house. Like, how does it make you feel? How do you? Uh, how have you um, benefited from a space like this? So introduce yourself. Let us know who you are and where you come from, and you know, let us know who you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shona. Um, I have four children and that's like my number one right now. But before my children, I was in the service for nine, 10 years. I first started out in the Navy and I went into the Army. I served in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I had issues coming, you know, from that time in the service. Um, and my children's father, uh, he, lost his leg in a motorcycle accident and kind of that's where like the opiate started you know and right. you don't see it until it's like you're there and you're going through it right. you know and i knew i needed help and it was you know i'm a mom with four children what what do i do you know i didn't know like i just didn't know where to go that's pretty much uh uh you know how i got here and it was just a series of God leading me, really, Praise you know, God, because yeah. <laughs> I don't think I, I, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And now it's like, I Amen. just give him all, all the glory, you know, and Praise I just like, I thank him for like, just waking up every morning, you know, because I'm giving mm -hmm. like this life and it's awesome in the house. The house is like, whoa, <laughs> you know, coming from the last place that I came to, it was very, just awful, I think. You know, women in recovery, a lot of them do come off the streets. So when they are put in these places, it's like, it's just awful. Like just furniture and ju just, you know, but they're like, well, you're off the street. So this is like what you're mm. used to, you know? Yeah. And that's not my, that wasn't my situation. I wasn't, you know, for me, it was like, I'm not, you know, I got, I have a house and I got my children and I just got into this, you know, mess along the way. And I just felt like, um, you're stereotyped, you know, yeah. that's what I yeah. realized when I came in. That stigma. Yeah, yeah, you know, or you're just an addict, you're a yeah. liar, you're a prostitute, you know, and I just had all these labels and it was like, no, I have so much more. I have my, um, I got my bachelor's in criminal justice wow. with Homeland Security and a minor in public management, all while I had my four children, you know, after the military. So, I mean, I have, you know, just a lot of experiences and, you know, stuff that God's uh, put in my life and, you know, that I learned. And now it's like, I got to that point where I just messed my whole life up. I really did, you know, mm -hmm. and 
I, I just, I, I was doing things my way and it was only God that could bring me out. That, that God. Yeah. That's where it, God. it got to like, you know, yeah. where I can't do this and that's I'm on my way and I'm crying every day, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, how am I going to get out of this mess? You know, I got my, I got my children, uh, like CPS got involved, you know, and my children went and start staying with my family. Mm. I'm, I'm in veterans court, you know, and it was just like this awful, like dream, almost almost like a nightmare. Yeah. I'm like, how am I living? This is not my life, mm -hmm. you know? Like, this is not what I planned. How did this happen? And I just, I prayed, you know, I really did. I prayed to God and I just was like, can you please help me? I know, I, I know I've done all these horrible things and I'm sorry, you know? And my, my father passed away and I didn't realize uh, that grief, you know, is a powerful thing. And yeah. but also my PTSD from the uh, military, you know, and it was like, I would kind of just fall through the cracks with the right. VA. I wasn't getting connected with the right people, right. you know, so like my addiction was just getting worse because my uh, me mental health wasn't being addressed. Right. So that's why I was like turning to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll drop to yeah, like yeah. suppress, you know, all those right. feelings and, and the void that I had yep. in the depression. Filling so. that void. Yeah. Definitely, like I, I'm listening. Yep, filling the void. When you have that emptiness, you're trying to fill it, and sometimes you're trying to um, suppress the noise. You know, there's like there's the noise of life and regrets and feeling like you're not in a space you want to be in. It's like you're trying to find something to suppress the noise. You that know? guilt is no joke too. You know? Yeah, yeah that. I was, a, I was a caregiver, you know, and I wasn't taking care of myself. I had to take care of my four children. I had to take care of their father. I had, to take, I had to take care of my father, you know, and all this like was put on me and I had no, no support, nowhere to turn to. And it just got to like where I was drowning. And, you know, I, yeah. I didn't know what to do. I actually came to Stutzman in Buffalo, like 95 pounds. I was like a mess, you know, my family did an intervention. And they really like pulled me out just in time because I don't Praise think God. I would be here to be honest Thank had I God. not, um, you know, had that like my family was like, you need to get, you know, just pretty much pulled me out and took me, dropped me off and did that for me. Isn't that amazing? But I had that, you know, like people don't, women don't have that, you know, no. and I think like just with my four children, I, I have a six month old, I have a one year old, a uh, five year old and an eight year old. You know, and it's it's a lot. That is a lot. You know. <laughs> you know what's really amazing is that God started solving her problem two years ago. Hmm. He, wow. he heard you years ago before you even knew that. Oh you were yeah. <laughs> That's I think that's story fantastic. Story crazy too. Mm -hmm. So I have a pastor that I met through uh, just uh, mutual acquaintances, and she was telling me about, oh, I met these wonderful people, and they're building this house, and I'm like in my addiction. I didn't, you know, I could care less. <laughs> I was, you know, one in one year out the next. Yeah. And then little did I know that. I looked them up and it was the same house that she had mentioned like two years ago. No way. I, yeah, I could make the interview. So I sent her and then they like know each other. And See? it just was like one this of those, works. you know, where God's working. Yeah. All things work together for all the good things, of those. All things God. work. So I'm curious, like tell, tell us about how this house is helping like the things that he spoke about as far as creativity is concerned, uh, how the floor is, the reflexology, the, the music. So bring us into this, this space, like in your perspective, like how is it helping you? Just the, the environment, it's, the upstairs is quiet. I don't know if you said something about like. Yeah, I used a, I used a certain kind of uh, drywall that would silence everything yeah wow. like this quiet time that i have that i like you know and then when i do want the music i do turn the music on um the sauna when i first got here i i did i was doing an hour at, at, in the morning and an hour at night and that was just you know drinking all the water flushing all the you know toxins and whatnot so that helped just the just the environment it's just a beautiful house a beautiful brand new house you know and i just like 
it's all God. You know, he, he, he builds, you know, kingdom. He's, you know, we inherit the kingdom and that house is like, well, I would imagine, you know, what God would make for his children. Praise oh, God. Right. That's awesome. That's really <laughs> awesome to hear. That is awesome. <laughs> that's really, to, really touching <laughs> to hear. Like, that's really beautiful. I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm, I'm so excited for you. And this is the first time we're meeting, but like, I'm excited for your journey. And, and, the, and I truly believe like the, the reason why I'm so drawn to the work that you're doing, um, Pastor L is, is, you know, my story, you know, my mom was an addict and she, she, you know, I, I don't know if she had opportunities and things like that. I would hope she did, but her, her story doesn't end well you know she she passed i was she passed due to uh drug overdose and i was three years old it was me my brother and my sister we were in foster care and um when i hear about people doing this kind of work i get excited because it's like i don't know it's like that hope you know and that's why i kind of i always want to help and try to try to give as much as possible because it, it it's kind of a feeling like I'm helping my mom in a sense, you know what I mean? Right. Like, or helping those who may be in that, in a similar circumstance like her. So man, this this is really good, man. I can't wait to take a good. tour. I go to um, the Angel Tree. It's like a prison fellowship ministry. Uh -huh. uh, I had gotten in the mail, like a little angel. And I remember when I was younger, because my dad was in prison. And uh -huh. I actually got those presents from Angel Tree. Like they made Christmas happen and it would have happened. So now that I'm older, like you, I say you want to give back. Yeah. So that's something that I do is I donate to the um, Angel oh, Tree. Oh man, that's awesome. For children whose parents are in prison and they can't, you know, they can't afford to get them so toys so and stuff. And it saved me a while when I was younger. It's, what's amazing, what I love about this is that like there was an intervention that happened within your life, right? And then you're here and you're developing, growing. And while you're doing that, you're you're learning. And and this is your story. Right. And so like with my story, I go and I tell people and I try to teach other people like, hey, this is how I got through. This is what I use. These are the mechanisms. These are the tools. And like you, you're you're able to take everything that you're going through and then go beyond like who knows in two years from now like where you could be and where you could be telling your story like you're telling your story here there's people listening and commenting and who knows who you're touching here i just think that whole process it's just it's just amazing to me i, I love that process you know um looking at the time i have two more questions one dealing with collaboration and one dealing with commitment and i want to make sure i have time for people to ask questions because i'm sure there there may be some out there so with collaboration, speaking to the efforts that were um, gone about to build this house or to put this, put the pieces together, um, talk to us about what collaborative efforts were needed in order to bring the vision um, of the Rebecca Rose house to life. So, <clears throat> well, we're, remember earlier I told you that we were- Real quick, I'm sorry. We're, can can we're, you shift the camera just- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay. So you both are in there. Okay. Good. Perfect. Yeah, we're in the frame. Okay. Yeah. So, so back in 2015, we were leading the way in recovery, in, uh, excuse me, in, in overdoses. And this is when God was really, really working on me. And uh, I, at the same time, I was involved in a car accident. We were rear ended. I, I got a busted back out of it and mm -hmm. needed some surgeries. And, uh, but the guy that was uh, in Lockport, Dr. Cappuccino in Lockport, he, his friend, his, his daughter is overdosed. And we were talking about, you know, this stuff going on. And he said, you know what, I'm gonna help. And so he pitched in to help with the house. Then my other friend, uh, Dr. Darren Caparasso at the Buffalo Medical Group, he gives out the Vivitrol shots and he, he helps out with that. Wow. And he says, you know what, I'm gonna help. And then Dr. Donna Potter, you know, I know she says, you know what, I'm gonna help. And wow. so, she, so every aspect, of, 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 of Shauna's recovery is covered four years before I even knew the house was gonna exist. <laughs> you see what I mean? And and uh and so so we're building and building and building and building and God is just doing things along the way and 
The, the community of Lovejoy is just embraced this. Our church has embraced this. And, and there's so many people that love her that she doesn't even know are on their knees praying for her right now. And that's the kind awesome. of community that we have right now. We have a, a, a community that that is, it's, it seems like uh, something that serendipitously occurred because now these collaborations are now working for the good of those who love God <laughs> and are called. And it's the most amazing thing to, to know that God is already, he's already, just like you said in Psalm 46, he's already cut the pathway, he's already setting the water streams, he's already making a way, you just gotta get up and walk it. Get up and go. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, that's amazing, man. Like like I said, I'm I'm always interested in that journey. And, and when you, because sometimes we don't even know what's going to happen until we're in the middle and the thick of things. And then we look back like, oh my God. Like, you know, I look back and I think about my childhood and yeah, it was rocky, but it taught me so much. It taught me so much. Like in, in, in the things that I learned then, I use now, you know. And that's why I, I try not to live with re, with regrets, you know, and live and say, ah, I wish I, I wish I did this or I wish I did that. I just want to learn and grow and develop and just teach whatever it is that I learned and then just keep going. You, all you can do is just keep going, you know. You know it, when you're on this walk, like with you, when you're on the walk, God starts to reveal his gifts that he yeah, gave you, yeah. right? And now, here I am, you know, working in finance. I had no idea that that I had these gifts at all. Right. But it was trusting God and actually taking that step in the dark. And every time I put my foot down, there was something solid that that Christ has placed there. And then He illuminates a path. You don't. You just know you got to get all the way over there, but you don't know how you're going to get there. But God just says, move forward. And every right. step, when, whenever I needed like uh, innovation, he's given me the ability to innovate. Whenever I needed to solve a technical problem, I, I got on YouTube and I learned how to solve that problem. If I needed to build a computer, I built a computer. If I needed artificial intelligence, I learned how to build convolutional neural networks. <laughs> I mean, I actually did these things so that so that we could build the community that I had no idea that God wanted built. And, and, and he built it. Right. Using people like yourself, me and Shauna, right. he, he, he's, he's built it. And he's he's reaching those sheep that are not a part of this fold, but know his voice. Mm. Man, that's beautiful. Man, that's God crazy. Is God is good. And then, man, I'm just, it's so many things. There's so many I things. Mean, Christian though, like there's all these houses out there, but they're not Christian. You no. know, even with Don, Dr. Donna Potter, it's Christian counseling. I've never had in my in, you know 20 years of counseling, I've never had Christian counseling. Oh yeah, they're all Christians. The doctors, wow. the counselors, everything. There and and you know people think that that we Christians are are some you know faith filled ignorant people that just trust God. No, God's got scientists. He's got doctors. He's got programmers. He's got, you know he's got he's got his people where he needs got a them network. most. And, and we are not a dumb people at all. No, we are definitely not a dumb people. Not at and all. And we will use every thing to, to to pull this girl up every rung of the ladder of faith that we got. Right. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's that many members, right? Many members mm -hmm. one body. You know, definitely. You know, it's just different people within their different aspects and places. That's why it's important to move move with the heart and vigor of Christ and and follow what yeah. it is that follow the scripture do the will of God you know and and do it unto him and in excellence you know and just continue to go and flow so I, I have another question for you dealing with the scripture so the scripture is um and and all throughout this all I hear is this anyway but the scripture is Luke 14 28 uh, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and count it the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it and it goes on to talk about like if you if you don't have the things you need in order to finish it what's the point of even starting and if you don't finish it you're gonna you're gonna it's kind of people will make a mockery of you so um it's basically talking about count the cost how has this process been for you in looking long term and what you're trying to accomplish. Like you talked about how you took time to do research and development. It's not something where you had this dream of like, oh, let me go out and 
help his people and build this house and just jump in. You took time to develop, to make sure that you can fulfill what it is that needed to be fulfilled so that individuals like Shauna could come in and, and be a beneficiary of this space. Like talk about that learning and that educational process. You know, when you're, when you're a half a century like I am, <laughs> you, 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 you think that you're just over that curve, right? Uh, but the Bible says that God will bring all things into remembrance. And, and I have a sign, you know, I was raised as a young scientist and all of these things are flooded me at the time. So the biggest problem I had wasn't really the knowledge. It was the faith. Mm. The big knowledge I had is that I needed to cling and depend on the Lord a hundred percent. I couldn't lean on my own understanding for nothing because my own understanding got me where I was. But look at where, where God has brought me to. You see what I mean? And, right. and it, it, it's, it's amazing that that faith illuminated every gift that God has given me. And I, I suspect that there's a lot more, but it was faith. So when you say count the cost, the biggest price tag was faith. In Mark 9, 23, Jesus Christ says, all things are possible, only believe. Because you have this, this virus in us that's innate called self-doubt. And we start doubting and we get the noodle legs and we're nervous and <laughs> is this the right thing? And we start questioning God and, and, and asking him, you know, 50 questions when he said, you know, the, listen, Gideon, <laughs> I showed you the police. I mean, it was dry, it was wet. What, what, what more do you want? Right. Get up to get at it. You know, <laughs> so I, I just, that was the biggest transition of my life was to get up and to get at it. Trusting God was where it all began. And, and trusting God was probably 80% of the price tag of the cost, you know? And uh, and I decided that I was gonna trust God and, and trust him fully and, and trust him uh, to, to weave this Charlotte's web of, of, of beauty that he's done here. And, and he's just done such a, a, over and above anything that I could possibly imagine. Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. Girl, you know what I'm about. To you know what right. I mean. So it, right. it's it's, a, it's it's just it's amazing the things that God unlocks in us. Yeah. He, he just unlocks these things in us. Things you just it, never knew. Things you never knew were there. Like what? Like I I the things that I'm able to do and and it's it's overwhelming. It's it's definitely and truly overwhelming. Every day is just another journey. Right. Um. So yeah, that that particular question dealt with commitment. That commitment to um, counting the cost, making sure you have the things that you need in order to get the job done. And like you're saying, like you're learning something new every day to do what to continue this whole thing going. Um, speaking of <laughs> man, speaking of continuing it going, like what's the future hold for this home? You know what what is it that you're aspiring to? What's the goal? So, have you ever seen the movie The Matrix? Oh yeah. There's a character by the name of Neo. Yeah. Right. The one. Neo. Yeah. Neo is like this one. She doesn't realize it yet, <laughs> but she, she she's seeing what God is unlocking in her life right now. What pill and, did you take? The red one or the blue one? <laughs> yeah. You know, she's taking the red one with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're taking the red pill with me, right? Mm. And so, you know, and and so, w w I think that the next, the next me will come out of that house. Don't. Well, I, I feel that the Lord wants us to open up our own medical facility for detoxification, a Christian de detoxification mm. facility, so that we can we can help from beginning to end. We don't want a revolving door. We don't want people that are that are just you know chattel that make us money. We don't want it. We want lives saved, mm -hmm. lives protected, and we want God's children to make it. I mean, what we charge for nine months, they charge for one month, mm. literally. Yeah. You know, and so wow. and more than that. You know what I mean? And so wow, we're not in this for the money. We're in this to, to show forth the glory of God in the lives of His children. She belongs to to Christ. You know. She's a child of the Most High King, you know, and, and I'm the current shepherd over this. But, you know, the, the truth is, is that we are building an entire five-fold ministry here, mm -hmm. you know, and every, every cog, every person, yeah. every 
person in our church, in our community, mm -hmm. including her. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Love Joy Wellness with Heather. We have the, the Speakeasy a restaurant, which right. is a, a, an alcohol-free restaurant. We have the Labrador. You know, this church has got a lot of things going on in yeah. this community. And we're, we're building the kingdom of God here right now yes. for God's children right now. Yes. And this, and imagine if more churches did the same, right? Like a, yeah. that would be a force to be reckoned with. That's then we're we're looking at more. So so much is so much more that can be done, but one one step at a time, one neighborhood at a time, one community at a time, right? Now you right. you were speaking. You, we were talking the other day, and you're saying that there's going to be more women that are going to be coming into the home and. Um, did you want to speak to that and how that's gonna build as time goes on? And we would like we would like five of these homes. Um, we would like five technologically advanced homes, but we'd like to set up people that will help us run those homes. Uh, and we want people that are spirit filled. We want uh, people that will talk to talk to the Shanas of the world, like she matters. I yep. mean, not just, not just a caseload. Stigma. You know, she is a, yeah. She is a spirit filled being, you know, right. a spirit filled being, not just the, not just physiology. She, she has a, a, a spirit that needs to be uh, attended to. And this is how people are able to, to rise above uh, any kind of addiction, whether it be pornography, alcohol, whether it be working 90 hours a week, whatever it is, this is what helps. People need to know that they're just not animals and that they that they are impulsive and impetuous and they do what they feel when they feel like it. Mm -hmm. No, we are outside of that. We are aware of how we feel and we're gonna live our lives knowing that we are aware of even how we think. I don't want that thought. Neuroplasticity can fix that. Mm -hmm. You know, neuroplasticity is a big deal when the house was built to to cause neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we have churches here like like Bishop Thompson. From uh, Mount Calvary, from his, Mount Calvary Church yeah. uh, is a magnificent help in all of this. And is you know, he whatever the, I is he the one that people, built? He helped build yes. us. He's really yes. good. He you know, he did my mom's in, he did my mom's uh, bathroom. <laughs> the man <laughs> did my mom's bathroom too. and roof. And, and then you know, uh, Elder Joseph Chandra, he helped us with with some work in the house. He was fantastic. Uh, so it was, it was, and, and these people are giving and giving and, and trying to help us get to, to that finish line. And, uh, the, the Lord just brought all these people out of yeah, nowhere to awesome. help us along the way. Church members, our mothers in our church, people just showed love. Yeah. And then there's this goodness project that just filled us with, you know, toilet paper and everything when this COVID hit, right? you know, when the, the COVID hit, right? When we launched the house, the only person that got in at that time was her. Yeah. Chandra. Okay. You know, and, and we couldn't, and she's COVID free. We're COVID free, and we just wanted to make sure it stayed yep. that way. So, yep. it, you know, it, it honestly, we're just doing what God says. Yep. But the, the, the idea with a collaboration with other folks is that they're helping us build an idea, and this idea is going to help us build a medical facility. And this medical facility will be built to help people from beginning to end. That's awesome. You know, you know, so That's our awesome. addiction conference program with, with Donna Potter is 165 people clean for four years. Wow. Wow. That that's so, that's amazing. But really, really quick, because time is running low and I want to make sure we get to comments and questions like, you know, we could probably keep going. We could probably keep yeah. going. Um, but I want to get to some questions. Josh, did you point out any questions? Yeah, there's one um, so, that came through. It, it was basically asking if you have no tools but you have the vision do you step out anyway what if you aren't seeing the evidence of it like you know like you're not seeing the fruit of this vision that you you had and prayed about and mm -hmm. maybe you don't have the tools do you just kind of just step out anyways in faith and you know how do you how do you navigate that when you're not maybe seeing the result of, yeah. you know what i mean i don't know if you guys heard that but if yeah, you I have did. if you have a, a vision mm -hmm. right and right. no tools do you do you just jump into this thing and just make it happen like from your perspective how do you how do you feel about that if you don't have the tools to do it do you jump in or do you wait for the tools well see this is how it unfolded for me i didn't have uh i had no knowledge of, of comorbidity or, or mental uh, illness at all uh one of my friends gave me a book called the dsm-3 and the dsm-5 i read it 
And, uh, and then I consulted with all my friends uh, that are doctors and physicians that, that so that I can understand, I can understand the, 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 where I'm at, right? I'm not a doctor but, and nor can I prescribe anything, but I can understand, you know, what the doctor will tell me, right? And uh, because the vision is going to lead you to seek the knowledge and the knowledge is going to equip you to walk the path and the faith will give you the, the ability to continue walking through the dark until you get to where God wants you to get to. Because honestly, to the, to the person that asked this question, their biggest hurdle is going to be themselves. Mm -hmm. When they trust mm -hmm. the Lord and they know God equips those he calls. Sometimes you just got to move forward, count the cost, right. and just get it done. Get just up and dance. It. You know, uh, yep. so, so did, did I have the money to do this? No. No. Did, did I did it get built? Absolutely. It did. You know, every need was met that God says, and now it's, it's paid for. You know, it, and uh, entirely, no mortgage, paid for, built, all new in, in love joy. And so wow. to the person that has the vision, if God called him, he will equip he who will. he calls. He will, he will, he will make doors fling open. I've seen yes. it. I've seen it. He will blow doors down. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, Judd? No, that was really the biggest one. Someone I'm, asked about maybe one. That's a great question too. A tour of the building. Somebody wants a tour of the building. Maybe one day, I I, I don't know, um, when everything kind of calms down, perhaps um, I can do like a quick camera video tour through. Um, or they I, can visit us on the web too. I mean. Oh yeah, yeah. You can visit, yeah, so visit on the it's, web. It's, yeah, it's Let our, them know. our yeah. R C O F N W N Y. So it's Rebecca Rose Recovery Centers of Western New York. So it's R R R C O F W N Y dot com. Awesome. And if there's any other information, if people want to contact you, if somebody in here feels moved that they want to donate or find a way to connect, if you can give out that information as well before we get shut wanna, down by you. If they want to donate, they can send a, send a donation to 115 Gold Street, Buffalo, New York, 14206 to uh, the Rebecca Rose. Uh, and we, we she'll tell you, we use it all to to help the girls uh, because we yeah. want these girls. We want, them to, we want them to have life and life more abundantly. abundantly. So when why did Jesus say, I came to give you life if we're already alive? Because he knew that our spirits were feral and dead. So he said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. so, so, so we don't have to live de dead anymore. We don't have to live like, like you know, like my dog. I mean, we, we can have life and we can have joy and we can have peace and we can be anxiety free. Yeah. And there's a God has already got a pathway for us. You know, we don't have right. to live like, like, you know, the next person. We, we have a father that cares about it's us. It's so true. It's so true. Definitely. Well, I know we have like one minute <laughs> left on um, IG. So uh, before um, it completely c knocked us off, because what I think is it actually knocked us off, but we're going to keep going and I'm, I'm going to connect us back again um, because you only get an hour with IG. Right. And uh, I don't want to. Yeah, it didn't seem like it at all. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. I didn't know that we went that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm going to just get us re. Hold on one second. I'm gonna just get us reconnected because um, I want to make sure I speak on. I sp not only speak on um. Started like at eight. The, a the AI for community, but just allowing people that are that were part of giving. I want to say thank you and you know things like that. So, right. let me get us back in here. Yeah, thank you for all the food. So I hope we get to meet. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I really want. Great. I really want her. I really want you to meet her. That'd be She's great. She's got a lot of best. <laughs> That'd be really great. I'm I'm down for it. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm I I'm glad that we were able to um raise the money to, to give man that was really cool i i me and my husband actually it's really thanks to josh because he's the one that kept pushing me because i'll i'll overthink things 
Yeah. I'm an overthinker. I'm like, uh, I don't know. He was like, I love that man, Josh. Yeah, I man. love that man. He was like, no, you you got this. You know, stop overthinking it. Just make it happen. And we did. We did it. We put it out there, and people gave. Like we were, we met our goal in less than 48 hours. Cool. So we're back again. Uh, okay. You guys can join in again. I wanted to make sure that we end it off nicely. <laughs> um, we want. Okay. I wanted to make sure that uh, we can talk about like the AI for community and how my husband pushed me. I had this idea. I said I really want to uh, gather some funds. I, I I did I did so on my business space. I was able to raise some funds and um give back to small businesses but then i i'm like well let's do something else you know let's try to help somebody else and um he he said you know pastor l is over there doing amazing things i'm like yeah i know though let's help them <laughs> uh so whoever bought whoever bought t-shirts like i i have t-shirts um pray push Thank persevere you. go all in like that's the motto of my life pray push persevere everything that you do go all in and so um i said hey from this time to this time we're going to sell t-shirts and all of the proceeds are going to go to um rebecca rose recovery house and um man less than 48 hours we reached our goal we only wanted to sell 10 shirts we figured that'd be a good chunk of money to be able to fill some cabinets or what have you with some um non-perishable food and people just was like yes we think we love this mission we love this let's keep giving so i wanted to say thank you thank you thank you thank to you thank you thank you thank you everybody who and people donate it too. So some people are like, I already have your shirt, so I'm just gonna give. So we have people who donated funds. Um, people are rocking a shirt, rocking a mission, but yet their funds helped us uh, service you guys. So thank Great you God. to everyone who bought a shirt. That is so motivating and encouraging. And you were able to help us help Shauna. And, and anyone else who comes into this home. Um, she's already excited. She's already excited. That's awesome. It's, so be- it's just so beautiful. It, it, it is it is beauty in motion. It is, it's it's just so elegant and beautiful that people that we don't know are helping people that they don't know. I know. Because, because we all know each other through Christ. Yeah. It, it's just, it's so humbling. It's, it's such a humbling. Touched by too. Yeah. It seems like everyone I know that has their story too. Right. Praise God. Right, right, yeah. Um, it, it's it's it gives me goosebumps. You know, a lot of times when I think back, you know, um, I come from a beautiful woman, um, who had a void in her life, you know, and she filled that void with all she felt that could take her away from whatever issues she felt, and. She, I'm pretty sure she tried the best that she could, but she was just caught up into something, you know? And here, me, my brother and sister were placed in the foster care and told that we wouldn't be able to amount to anything. I was told I would be a failure to thrive. And I went through a process and my adoptive mother, my mom, raised us in the church, kept us in, involved in activities, taught us, do what you can while you can, is she a perfect parent? No, I'm not. Who is? God. That's it. And uh, went through processes and 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 then now fast forward to this moment where I'm sitting here and it's like, man, God is good. Praise God. God is, God is amazing. God is amazing how he can use those that people would have thought would be nothing and yep. use them for something Isn't that like a lot amazing. Of, uh like mothers too you know that got caught up and they did get their children taken and that just like devastates you even more yeah you know? and, and puts you even further like, yeah they don't even get back because their children are gone so they're like well what are we doing you know and they, there's no place like i was scared going to a place because i had heard like horrible things you know yeah. that you get caught right back up in it so i'm like why am i going to a place that i could just be right back on the streets again that makes no sense wow. so they're you know, because so many lives are affected. Right. Even my 
you know, just being gone and then it's still happening. You can imagine, you know, how many years ago that, you know, like family court, CPS, drugs, alcohol, just the whole foster care system and children getting taken. It's still happening today. It and is. with this opiate addiction, I can only imagine how many other children, because when I went through family court, they like steamrolled me to take my children. And I, even though I had like all, you know, my children were in private school, I had a college degree, you know, none of that mattered. None of it mattered. Yeah. It was like, you did drugs, we're taking your children. And right. they, they already started the process, but because I'm native, I, I uh, exercise my rights that, hey, my, my children are native, they belong with their family. So that's the only reason why I got to keep my children. But if my children were taken in foster care, I would like just be, I, that would be the, yeah, yeah, I might think, you know, I could, on, I could I only, so she, she identifies with where your mother was, you know, and wow. it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a tough road, but God is, God has brought up, he summoned us into service, Listen, right? right? He has summoned us into service and, and we are here and we're not going to let his children, we're, we're just not going to let them fail. We, Absolutely. we just won't do it. Absolutely. Won't. And it, it's cool. It's like soldiers being equipped, right? And that's, that's how I look at my life now. Like I have experiences on this side of being a child of an of an addict a beautiful I, I look at she was a beautiful woman and she was intelligent very intelligent very inquisitive but there was an issue you know but i had an experience on the other side which built me up to have this compassion and empathy and um this willingness to serve in that capacity my heart goes out to things that you're the type of work that you're doing and um like yo if you need me to come down and speak and you know, I got programs, buku programs. Yeah, if if you if you need me to do something down there, you already know. You can just hit me up, hit me yeah, and Josh up, You'll be and there. I'll come down. Like we can do a, a program or, or whatever. I will come speak, I'll perform whatever you need. Uh, I'm, my heart is 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 definitely open to specifically this type of space because it's needed. It's it's definitely needed. I have a heart for this specific um, area, you know. But I don't I don't want to hold you guys up. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can talk another hour. But um, I really wanted to allow the those that are following me to see what's happening on the other end, especially because we people were buying shirts. I want them to see this is where your money went. Here here it is, and get to know. Exactly exactly not just pictures of you know food and videos but let's sit down and see what the see what kind of work is happening so um yeah i i, I definitely i'm excited i guess i got too close to the video so my face got bloody sorry um i see that there's um a couple i think that there is a comment can we all commit to keeping this space and the vision for a detox center lifted in prayer may it be done in jesus name absolutely thank you so much so um thank you i appreciate this time you guys spending your time and just chopping it up over here behind the canvas yeah that's right so Praise um, God. thank you so know, much thanks for having us yeah no problem and i'll probably be seeing you guys soon thank yes, you, you will, so, thank no you doubt. so much <laughs> all right god bless you all right god bless you too Take care. Bye-bye. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions, thoughts, uh, anything they wanted to share. Um, that that was amazing. That interview was awesome. Um, it was touching. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed at, by how God is utilizing people. It's definitely important to work within that passion allow God to lead your path. Um, it, it's just dynamic. I'm, I'm, I'm just overjoyed. I'm definitely overjoyed. Uh, is if there's anyone else that want to chop it up and talk or have any other questions, like I said, thank you so much for just your willingness to give those who gave your willingness to give like, man, like I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that you guys, uh, had a heart to be of service and, and displayed servitude because you're helping me help other people. For real, real talk, helping me help other people. And that's all I wanna do. I wanna go all in for Christ. Um, I wanna do what it is that um, he would have me to do. 
and you know pray push persevere through all of that uh, so if there's not any other questions um, any other thoughts I do want to let you guys know that on Tuesday I will be interviewing the VP of GOM who's the VP of GOM Shavana a dope sister in Christ um, just an amazing wife from what I've from what I've observed amazing wife an amazing mother an entrepreneur she has a lot of gifts skills talents and um she's just doing she's she's just doing a lot and, and I wanted to sit down and talk with her and get to know her even more and, and offer you guys the opportunity to get to know her even more so definitely tune in on Tuesday same time 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time we're gonna be talking about uh, concept creativity collaboration and commitment find out what the questions will be um, and we'll be chopping it up on Tuesday at 8 p.m. I'm just gonna check down here and see if anyone else has any thoughts grateful for your heart thank you appreciate it um, if there aren't any more thoughts, ideas, concerns, anything like that, I'm gonna get going. Um, I wanna share this flyer with you so that you can see, like I said, um, May 19th at 8 p.m. Definitely check it out. It's gonna be dope. I get to chop it up with this this woman. She's, she's definitely amazing. Um, and I, in my opinion, I don't know if anyone has had the opportunity to really get to know who she is. And I think this is a, this, this is a great um, chance to really find out more about who she is as a wife, a mom, just who she is, period, as a woman of God, you know. And so definitely tune in Tuesday um, at 8 p.m., all right? So for those of you who may not have seen the video I put out, just a thank you, a recap, I'm going to show it again. Um, pray, push, persevere, and in everything that you do, make sure you go all in. All right, you guys take care. Ecclesiastes 9.10 tells us that whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. While we are here, we need to be giving it our all. I appreciate every single one of you who helped support this campaign, AI for Community. With every t-shirt that was purchased, we were able to take those proceeds and purchase groceries for the Rebecca Rose Recovery Home. And I pray every woman who will be living there will be encouraged to pray, push, persevere, and in everything that they do, may they go all in.